Tell me a little bit about yourself. <laughs> There's not very much to tell. <laughs> Central Kentuckian from the ground up, and uh, I think I scribbled from babyhood on because my mother used to say, oh, someday you're going to be an artist, someday you'll be an artist. And uh, that was nice encouragement. And she'd save all these tricky little terrible, terrible drawings. And uh, I think that was a, a nice little impetus there. And uh, just, I just always did draw, sketch. I'm an illustrator, basically. I was just saying that Picasso's definition of art is a lie that makes you see the truth. That's as good as any definition I've ever heard. But to live up to that, it's not easy. And I just drew for fun. I didn't draw. And I never did intend to. I majored in English literature. I had no possible idea what that would lead to. Um, but I was having lunch with a friend at the old Lafayette drugstore, and a woman who owned a local fashion show, a fashion store, came by and she said, "Our um, illustrator is moving away." And she was talking to a friend of mine who was very proficient, very excellent artist. And would you like to do our ads? And she said, "Well, I'm moving to Texas, but Adeline will do them." Never drawn a fashion illustration in my life. So she said, well, draw some things, and, or come around and show me some of your work. Well, I didn't have any work, so I had to whip up some quickly, which I did, and went and got the job. <laughs> and poor people, they were so patient with me. It was just wonderful, and that was the beginning, and one led to another, to another, to another, and on and on, and like dropping up a pebble in a little stream or in a lake, you know, it spreads. It is a very non-traditional portrait. You noticed. <laughs> well, in a way, that is totally because it was Lucy a Little, because that's the way she was. She was interested in so many different things and took, play, took part in so many different things, helped people a lot that no one knows about. So I went to her house and did some preliminary sketching and then showed her, showed her what I thought would be interesting if she liked it, and she liked it, so I developed it with her cooperation with uh, the different facets of her career and personality. And she is responsible for the clock because she said she walked into the library early on when it was first opened and looked up and said that ceiling would be a perfect place for a big clock. And uh, so the problem was there was no ceiling. There's no place to put the clock, so you had to step back down, and I figured that out, which worked out pretty well. And uh, so then she uh, had, she, well, we had a wonderful committee working on that project. Everybody on there was per just so experienced and so expert at what he or she did, and the clock people in Cincinnati were good. So when we started talking about it seriously, how it would work out, I had walked in the library when it first opened with Bill Wickman, my husband, and we looked up and he said, you know what would be perfect in here? And I said, a Foucault pendulum? And he said, yes. It was a perfect spot for it. It just called out for it, I thought. Um, J.B. Faulkner was the uh, publicity director for Keeneland when I first started doing their ad advertising. And I was in his office one day early on, and he said, I'm leaving, I'm going to New York, I'm going to be co-director of the Thoroughbred Racing Association. But I've decided I want to start an award, and I'm going to call it the Eclipse Award, and uh, get me an Eclipse Award. <laughs> Just like that. So I quick, quickly went to the Keeneland Library, and Amelia Buckley was the librarian, and I said, I need information about eclipse. And she said, the American eclipse or the English eclipse? <laughs> I'd known her forever. And so I said, well, what do you think I want? Because <laughs> I had no idea. And she said, the English eclipse is the one. Talk about 
you know, what was it about the story that went into the thing? Ah, that's a good question, because he was a very distinctive horse. Stubbs did four paintings of him. His ears were always pinned back, as if he were about to bite somebody or attack somebody. He just was mad. He wanted to be first in everything, and he was. And so it was important to know that his ears were never, ever shown as pricked forward. He, he, he knew everything he needed to know. He wasn't interested in anything else. <laughs> Good question. What is next? I think finish the portraits I've got started, two or three doggies and a couple of people, and uh, people I really do want to finish, but I want them to be better than I can make them yet. And dear friends, one dead and one alive, and um, I'd like to paint something I'd be truly, truly proud of. Truly proud of. Faint hope? <laughs> Possibility? <laughs> I hope so. Yeah.